Okay, let's talk about that new Fermilab result on the W boson mass. The CDF experiment at Fermilab just put out a new measurement of the mass of the W boson. They report a deviation from the standard model prediction of 7 sigma. Now, you might not be familiar with the CDF experiment. CDF was an experiment at the Tevatron, which was a proton-antiproton collider, which operated at Fermilab near Chicago. The Tevatron shut down and CDF stopped taking data in 2011, but there are some physics analyses still ongoing. Now, particle physicists have a tendency to start throwing around the word discovery when an experimental result disagrees with the standard model prediction by at least 5 sigma. So, a 7 sigma discrepancy definitely gets our attention. You can find the reference for the new CDF result here and in the video description below. You can also find some references for related experimental and theoretical papers in the video description as well. There are also a few videos available on this channel that you might find useful if you want more information about today's topic. If you'd like to get a better feel for what terms like Five Sigma mean, there's a playlist that you might be interested in called Understanding Five Sigma. There is also a two-part series on the discovery of the W boson that you can check out. Okay, with that, let's give a very brief review of the standard model. Okay, here's the particle content of the standard model. It contains six quarks and six leptons. The quarks are the up down, charm, strange, top, and bottom. The leptons are the electron, muon, tau, and their associated neutrinos. Interactions of particles in the standard model are mediated by the gauge bosons. The photon mediates the electromagnetic force, the Z and W mediate the weak force, and the gluons are responsible for the strong force and we have the Higgs boson. The topic of this video is the W boson, one of the gauge bosons responsible for the weak force. Okay, as we said, there are six quarks and six leptons. They are arranged into three families, represented here by grouping into parentheses. These families are related to how the quarks and leptons interact with the weak force, and therefore with the W boson. The W boson has an interaction with each family. It interacts with the upper and lower element in each of these sets of parentheses. For example, let's look at the interaction of the W with the first quark family which contains the up and down quarks. This interaction allows, for example, an up-type antiquark to collide with a down-type quark, producing a W-. There are similar interactions with the other families. These interactions also determine how the W decays. For example, that W- particle can then decay to an electron and an electron antineutrino from the first lepton family. Alternatively, the W- could decay to a muon and a muon antineutrino. We haven't shown all the possibilities here, but we should keep these three interactions in mind for what we'll see next. Okay. With that short description of the standard model out of the way, let's talk about what CDF does, or perhaps more appropriately, did. The CDF experiment collided protons with antiprotons. So here we're visualizing these collisions occurring on the horizontal axis in this picture. 
Now, this is different from what LHC does. There, they collide protons with other protons. The collisions at CDF were at a center of mass energy of 1.96 TeV. This is quite a lot lower than the energy of the Large Hadron Collider, which most recently ran at 13 TeV. Okay, now protons are known to not be fundamental particles. They are made of other particles. For example, we can take a look at a down-type quark in the colliding proton and an up-type antiquark in the antiproton. We saw a minute ago that the standard model allows an up-type antiquark and a down-type quark to collide and produce a W-. So when the proton and antiproton collide, the quarks they contain can collide and produce a W-, which will then decay. We saw that possible decays included the W- going to an electron and an electron antineutrino, or the W- going to a muon and a muon antineutrino. These are the decay products that CDF looked for. So an electron and its antineutrino, or a muon and its antineutrino. We should point out here that the W can decay into other final states, like a quark-antiquark pair. But decays involving electrons or muons are experimentally easier to identify and analyze. So that's why CDF just looked at those. Okay, so the W decays into an electron or muon and its associated antineutrino. The neutrinos interact extremely weakly with matter, and the detector is made of matter. For all practical purposes, the detector can't see them. They are effectively invisible. So the only W decay product you actually see is the electron or muon. Now, the W is a heavy particle, much heavier than the electron or muon or their neutrinos. When the W decays, its decay products come out with a lot of momentum. As a result, the electron or muon tends to have a lot of momentum directed away from the direction of the incoming proton and antiproton beams. As for the neutrino, it is possible to look at all of the particles produced in the detector and use conservation of momentum to reconstruct the neutrino momentum in the direction away from the axis of the proton-antiproton beams. CDF finds 1.8 million candidate W decays involving electrons and 2.4 million involving muons. A few of these will not be genuine W events. Instead, they will be from non-W processes that mimic W production. These latter processes are called background processes and have to be taken into account in the analysis. CDF then fits the W mass using distributions of three quantities. The first is the electron or muon transverse momentum, which is the momentum in the direction away from the beam axis. The second is the neutrino transverse momentum, and the third is the transverse mass, which is a quantity built from the transverse momenta. This gives a total of six different measurements of the mass, although they are not totally independent of each other. CDF gets their final result by combining these six measurements. We should mention that CDF does a blind analysis. If you want to know what that means, check out the video, What's a Blind Analysis, available on this channel. Okay, with that, we're ready to look at CDF's new results. Their experimental result is shown here. 
It is the most precise measurement of the W boson mass ever made. Let's take a look at how that compares with the standard model prediction, shown in the second line here. Even at a casual glance, we can see that the difference between these two numbers is quite a bit bigger than either of their error bars. In fact, it's a seven sigma discrepancy. At this point, it's important to know that while CDF's new result is the most precise measurement of the W mass, it is not the only one. In fact, there have been many. Here, we will just compare the CDF result with the two most precise of the other measurements. So here we have a plot of the W boson mass results. The yellow band is the standard model prediction with its error bar. The CDF result is the bottom one off to the right. The other two measurements are from ATLAS, which is at LHC, and D0, which, like CDF, was at the Tevatron. The CDF result is the most precise and seven sigma larger than the standard model prediction. But the results from ATLAS and D0 are nothing to sneeze at. They have uncertainties a little bit more than twice the size of the CDF uncertainty. But unlike the CDF result, they're both in good agreement with the standard model prediction. So it will be interesting to see how this situation develops. For more information, check out the references in the description below.